Hi, I'm Judy Morano. Welcome to the show. Today I'm joined by Kelly Murphy, who is a yoga instructor, and um, she's bringing yoga to the studio around the corner right now. We'll talk about that and all things yoga once we get to it. But let's start with how did you get involved in yoga? Um, I have been practicing yoga since I was probably about 16, um, but just a little bit. I was always an athlete, so that's kind of the way I, I went. But I started getting injured and just physically not feeling fit for mm -hmm. sports. So then I was drawn to the yoga side of it, a lot more stretching, but also mm -hmm. strengthening. Um, and it wasn't until I moved out to California that I was working um, a very intense, demanding job and I needed something to balance that out. <laughs> um, so I looked into a studio near mm -hmm. me and found it. And I actually, um, I'm sort of someone who jumps into things like I love that dive head I love first. That. Yeah. Um, so I ended up quitting my job and leaving. <laughs> oh, you really did dive head yeah, first. Yes. Um, leaving like a week later on a plane to Bali, Indonesia, and I got certified there for 40 days. Oh, um, you did one of those mm -hmm. all-inclusive 40 days yeah. yoga things. Yeah. Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was um, 15 people from around the world uh -huh. who came together, ranging from early 20s to like 45 years old. Uh -huh. And um, it was certainly a, a yoga teacher training, but that was like half of it. And then the other half was just kind of a spiritual journey. And uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, everyone was kind of coming there to heal and um, yeah. get to know themselves better. So, yeah. And what school of yoga do you follow? So the um, studio that I belong to out in California um, it was put together by a few different yogis from mm -hmm. different backgrounds. So mm -hmm. that was um, what really drew me to that mm -hmm. studio because it's Iyengar, it's also okay. Vinyasa. Uh -huh. um, and then that, those are the main two schools, uh -huh. Iyengar, which is based on um, all alignment. So it's mm -hmm. much, if you've ever taken a Vinyasa class, a Vinyasa flow, that's moving very quickly through right. poses. Right. Um, Iyengar is holding poses for a long time and making sure your alignment is um, mm -hmm. perfect, really. Um, so combining the two is really nice because you get that foundation mm -hmm. from the Iyengar standpoint mm -hmm. um, so that you can move through a vinyasa flow um, right. safely. And you can teach both together. There's yeah. no yeah. problem with yeah. both. Yeah, and that's, that's how I You're not I breaking teach. any rules by doing that. No, <laughs> no, not at all. Um, it's actually, I think it's, it's the best way to go through a, a class. Um, mm -hmm because you're able to do a flow which creates a lot of heat, mm -hmm. um, can be very strengthening, but if you're going through a flow without the knowledge of Iyengar, without all those um, specific, you know, you have different platforms, so you have your ankles, you have your hips, you have your um, shoulders, and in each pose you have to be aligning them correctly, otherwise you can hurt um, those joints. Mm -hmm. So, and you never want to hurt yourself doing yoga. That right. is not the right. right. I'm just thinking someone's watching this and they're saying, oh my gosh, that sounds like so much work. How can a new, new person get started? Right. You know, as a new person, can you walk into a class and just say, I think I'm going to do yoga today? So, of course, you can always do that. You can walk in. Um, I think, I mean, even for me, when I started doing yoga, I was super overwhelmed. And if you walk into a class that's an advanced, like, vinyasa flow class, mm -hmm. it's going to be super overwhelming, and you're probably never going to want to come back. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really good to look at classes and look at least for an intro or the style of class that I teach. I call it, like, a yin and yang. So I teach... Um, we kind of build up to harder poses uh -huh. in, in the class, but it starts out with more moderate stretching, mm -hmm. and I walk my students through what you should be feeling in each pose, because um, that's how I was taught, that okay. while you're teaching, you're focusing on from foot, you know, to get the platform all mm -hmm. the way up to the crown of your head, mm -hmm. and what you should be feeling and activating in each um, area of your body. Now, are there people who shouldn't do yoga? Are there any health restrictions? Um, Health restrictions, no. Of course, if you have, um, you know, back issues or neck issues uh -huh. of any sort, if you have herniated discs, um, there's certain poses that I know as an instructor that um, you shouldn't do. So at the beginning uh -huh. of every class, I always ask, you know, raise your hand if you have any injuries. Uh -huh. um, if you're pregnant, um, again, there's a few poses that we just have to m moderate for uh -huh. you. Uh -huh. um, if you've never done yoga before mm -hmm. and you're pregnant and suddenly you want to get may into it, may not be the best time. Probably to start. not the best time. Wait until after. But yeah, if you're, you know, if you've been doing yoga, you can continue. Uh -huh. um, and uh, yeah, if there's certain poses that, especially um, if you're going upside down, inversion poses. If you mm -hmm. have any neck injuries, 
highly ad advise not to do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, I'm a new yoga person. I come into your class. Mm -hmm. What do I expect? Mm. Um, my class, personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're going to come in. I Yoga, for me, my own practice, is um, a very spiritual process as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I begin every class with um, meditation and just, mm -hmm. you know, connecting with your breath. And kind I'm going to stop you right there. I can't meditate. My head's all over the place. I've got a hundred things in my mind. What are you doing for me? Just focus on your breath. That's, okay. I'm going to walk you through, uh -huh. um, you know, kind of just quiet you down, bring you to the moment. And uh -huh. that's what yoga is. Yoga means union in Sanskrit, um, and it's union of the body, mind, and spirit. So uh -huh. in order to unite the three, it's, it's your breath, because your breath is the life cycle. It's what brings energy into the body, and it's what allows the, the stale energy, the kind of toxins to exit the body. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you come into my class, and it'll be, you know, brief meditation, and then I, we do a unified om. Om mm -hmm. is the sound of existence, of creation, so you let out a unified om. Mm -hmm. And then we start just gently opening up the neck, opening up um, the shoulders, just gentle movements. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as we build, we'll get to kind of more standing poses. We start seated, mm -hmm. then we get to standing poses, and then moving standing poses, mm -hmm. um, some balancing poses and hip openers. And, uh -huh. um, you know, the, the most difficult poses are always kind of towards the end. And mm -hmm. then um, after that, we do a lot of restorative poses, so poses on your back called mm -hmm. supine poses. Um, sometimes we use some props, which are nice, uh -huh. and even we'll use kind of the wall for different things. Um, it really depends on, I, I base my classes on especially like the weather, like now it's really cold, <laughs> and when it's really cold, our hips just, it, so they much do. tension in our hips. They do. Um, they get really, so I do a lot of hip openers this time of year. Mm -hmm. um, in the summertime, it's a little different. So we do a lot of chest openers and different things. So we focus on different areas. Uh -huh. um, but overall, it's, I don't, I wouldn't call my classes a flow. I do, I call them yin and yang. So um, there's the, you know, building up the generating heat, the uh -huh. getting in a, a, you know, opening up the joints and the muscles and everything. Um, and then the restorative part. Um, so really more stretching and having different um, props to help the joints open. So when you go into a yoga class, you, it's like choreographing a dance. Oh, absolutely. You, yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that a good analogy? Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it is. Um, so mm -hmm. you think ahead of time. Does, yeah. So you don't think, okay, you, look, you don't look around the room and go, okay, I have these people here today, this is what I'm going to do. You actually plan it out ahead of time. Uh, I go in with a plan, but no, it always gets modified depending uh -huh. on who's in my class. Um, I have a general understanding of who's new, mm -hmm. um, and I'm fortunate that most people in my class are new, which is really nice, uh -huh. um, because then I can gear it towards that and really make sure I'm going through um, the different kind of guidelines for each pose, which um, as far as feedback that I've gotten, all my students love it. They're like, oh, you know, I've walked into classes before and I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm looking right. around right. and it's the worst, not the worst thing, but um, often when you're new to yoga, you're going to be looking around and, you know, right. watching the instructor and watching people and, uh -huh. and the best thing to do is really quiet the mind mm -hmm. and, and allow your body to express itself. And it's okay if you're not doing it everyone else's doing. Right, it's totally fine. <laughs> I mean, you can go into child's pose whenever you want. Uh -huh. um, and I always encourage my students to listen to their body mm -hmm. and allow their breath to really guide them through the movement. Um, mm -hmm. It's important to allow your inhalation to um, help the body stretch, to uh -huh. lengthen. Um, and then when you exhale, it's it's... Um, a way for the body to really release, release tension and mm -hmm. um, create space in the body. So, yeah. So, okay, I, I'm always sold. I mean, I, I did modified <laughs> yoga with a cast on my hand this week, so I, oh, I can wow. say that it was, cool. it was all good. Yeah, I've taught chair yoga when I was in California. I taught chair yoga to seniors. I was going to say age restriction, none. No, not at all. I had um, a 92-year-old man in one of my classes. Two times a week, he came and did everything. Wow. He was like, Really, it was very inspiring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was mm -hmm. watching YouTube. There's a woman who's 106. I don't know if you've seen it. She still does yoga no. every day. I believe it. Well, uh, so in um, kind of in Hinduism, but just in in Eastern medicine mm -hmm. as a whole, um, it's believed that as you slow your breath down, so through yoga, through meditation, um, the slower you breathe, the more. Um, the longer life you'll live, because the understanding is you have so many set breaths. Oh. Like the, at the moment in which you're conceived, uh -huh. you have a, a set amount of breaths. So if you slow your breath down, um, you will 
you know, prolong your life. You <laughs> just led me into my next question. Okay, health benefits. I don't think that anyone, everyone realizes the health benefits of yoga. So Tons. can we, can we talk sure. a little bit about that? Um, so depending on the poses you're doing, but as a whole, um, you're going to be not only strengthening your immune system um, by doing things like going upside down, um, it helps to increase your circulation, mm -hmm. um, especially stress. I have a lot of students who suffer from anxiety. I think everybody suffers from right. stress Right. So, anxiety. you know, in, in the culture we live in, uh -huh. um, it's very fast-paced. So yoga helps to really, really slow the mind down and therefore mm -hmm. slow the body down, which can really help um, with digestion, with excretion. I mean, everything. I... I, um, I don't know if this is too much information, but <laughs> if I don't do yoga in the morning, I like won't have a bowel movement. Um, <laughs> it's a way to really get every organ activated. Especially um, twisting and doing all those twisting things. Twisting yes. is so cleansing for the organs. Mm -hmm. um, so really anything. I mean, it's you know good for your lungs. It's good for you know your respiratory system. Um, but I would say definitely your nervous system gets the most benefits, um, especially going upside down, you know, and even just a, a simple down dog. You don't have to be going to headstand or anything mm -hmm. or, you know, handstand, but simple down dog, you know, for like a minute a day um, really helps calm the nervous system and puts you into your parasympathetic. So rather than being in your flight or flight, mm -hmm. um, you go into your parasympathetic and you can really um, handle life on life's terms a little better when you're and that's sort of the down. point of yoga, is it not? Just Absolutely. to kind of take it at a, at a, as it comes at you and sort of deal with it. Yeah, and, and to be present in the moment. Um, it, it really helps you to... And the physical postures, the whole reason, um, the practice of... Well, I should say there's a common misconception. Um, here in, in the United States, yoga, you think yoga classes. Mm -hmm. um, yoga is actually... Um, a much broader yoga encompasses meditation it co encompasses um, you know doing good by others kind of good mm -hmm. karma mm -hmm. um, and then what we know as yoga is actually called asana mm -hmm. um, so asana is the actual postures that you do in uh -huh. a yoga class uh -huh. um, and the purpose of asana is why they were created was for it was for monks to be able to meditate longer so it was just simply to be able to for the body to be present in the moment for mm -hmm. longer um, so nowadays, you come 21st century, um, it's a really good way to um, kind of get out of the, the craziness of life. You know, you can right. come into a right. class and for that one hour, you're granting yourself that time to, you know, get, get the to-do lists right. off the it's mind. It's hard to do, though. Oh, it's, it's very hard it's to do. It's very hard. It's very yeah. hard. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why I... I I enjoy teaching because I know how much it has benefited me, mm -hmm. not only physically, you know, I suffer from a lot of um, kind of endocrine issues and, and different things, circulatory issues. So physically, so many benefits. Mm -hmm. um, it really helps to keep my joints loose and it helps with a lot of chronic pain. Mm -hmm. um, but like emotionally and mentally, um, it really helps to keep me kind of balanced. Equal. Yes, balanced. Equal. Absolutely. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. about, and I do do yoga regularly, and I'm thinking about you know, going into the gym and you see all these guys that are, you know, well, there's no benefit to yoga because I'm not going to get any bigger <laughs> or I'm not going to get any stronger. Um, that's a very big misconception. Um, I have a friend who is very big into going to the gym. He goes five days a week, like lifts a ton. Mm -hmm. um, but when he does yoga with me and stretching, um, he says the next day he's able to, A, lift a ton more. Uh -huh. um, but, and, it, and it's the idea of if you're exerting so much energy and you're putting so much out, you have to invite energy back in to restore uh -huh. the body. Um, so you have to allow the healing of the muscles, of the tendons, mm -hmm. um, so that there can be more rejuvenation, more growth. Uh -huh. um, so it's absolutely like essential for you know bodybuilders for athletes uh -huh. um, to have that you know it's not even you're still strengthening I mean yoga is very demanding mm -hmm. um, especially if you go to like a vinyasa flow class or mm -hmm. you know a, a hot yoga class of any sort um, it's a workout uh -huh. absolutely uh -huh. but you're not just strengthening it's you're not just like stretching. going to the gym and doing a cardio workout right. it's completely different which is necessary because you got to keep yourself healthy and it really helps to eliminate injuries because um when you're that tight yeah. um it you know you're more prone to injury things but yet snapping. but yet it's sort of counterintuitive to what weightlifters will think right Ab yeah it is it is yeah. um but i just i always encourage just give it a try 
You know, right. I, I and it's harder it, harder than it looks. Yeah, it's much harder than it looks. It's much harder <laughs> than it looks. I know um, we had a gentleman come into yoga class and, and he was like all all about the you know the buff. Yeah. He was in child's pose like three quarters oh, of the class. He yeah. was like, yeah, no, not happening. <laughs> well, and it's because you're moving your body in ways you never do. I mean, right. poses where you're just simply externally rotating your shoulders. We live in a, you know you're hunched like this. Right. You're on the phone. You're driving. You're sitting at a desk. Right. Um, and when you're just simply doing poses where you're externally rotating the shoulders, you're activating different muscles. And right. it's like, oh my goodness, you know, yeah. I've never, I haven't felt these. I, do I have muscles there? Wait yeah. How did that happen? Yeah. So it's, it's very tiresome physically. And um, it's, but it, it's also not the like, oh, I feel exhausted because you still right. have the it's rejuvenating re it's side rejuvenating, to it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if someone was going to start today and they were nervous about going to a class, what could they do at home to kind of, Start the process. Is there some easy stuff you can do at home? Yeah, sure. To get yourself in the right headspace and the right, I don't know if that's the right word, um, sort of prepare yourself for yoga? Um, yeah, I mean, there's always, you know, from a young age, we learn like simple stretches like figure four, you uh -huh, know, touching uh -huh. your toes, things like that. Um, so you can always. Touching your toes actually is quite beneficial in yoga. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I always like to say, um, you don't have to be flexible, like physically flexible. Uh -huh. um, that just comes with time while, uh, while you're doing it. Um, uh -huh. It's really a, you know, it's, it's the journey, not, not the end goal. Well, I, I have know? to tell you, just again, my son, my son started yoga about, I don't know, about a year ago, right around now, and now mm -hmm. he's training to be a yoga instructor. Mm -hmm. When he first went to class, he could not touch his toes. Yeah. His knees were bent, and he could, now he stands on his hands. Right. And I go, how did that change? Like, mm -hmm. it's just, and it's with time. It's just with time, and it's, again, it's activating um, different energy lines in the body. With areas get blocked uh -huh. um, from just poses when we're sitting all the time. Which we spend so much time sitting right. and leaning over computers. And very linear. We're mm -hmm. very linear, whether we're, you know, running, walking, sitting. Um, yeah. So yoga helps to open up especially the hips, mm -hmm. um, which allow the low back and the hamstrings uh -huh. to loosen. So, so just simply getting up in the morning and touching your toes is not a bad idea. No, it's a great idea. <laughs> um, there's certain things that I do every morning. Um, a simple like sun salutation. They're called Surya Namaskar, sun salutation. So simply you stand, you know, just grounded on your two feet and you kind of open, sweep the arms up over your head mm -hmm. and then you kind of swan dive, hinge from the hips down and then you can come back up and you can do that a couple of times and it's not only waking up your body, waking, you know, activating different areas, uh -huh. inviting heat into the body, but it's stretching areas out that really help to kind of get your day going. And there's no wrong way to do that, is there? No, there's no wrong way. There's no um, I don't know. There's no wrong way. There's <laughs> really not. Um, when you're going into forward folds, I think um, often if you're not used to doing that, mm -hmm. people like to um, throw themselves forward. Yeah, and, you know, and come into this arch. Um, it's always hinging when you're going into any forward fold, you're hinging from your hips. Uh -huh. So the idea is to always lean with your chest. So you lead with your chest as you go forward, uh -huh. and then eventually, you know, your chest can drop and the crown of your head can come down uh -huh. towards the floor. But you really want to lead with your chest and, and hinge from your hips, and that will activate um, areas. And you may not be able to go as deep. That's right. okay. The, you know, the goal is to not go as deep as you can. It's not a competition. No, it's not a competition. Yeah. No, yeah. it's just take it moment by moment. And mm -hmm. like I said, I mean, there's some days where I wake up, I can't touch my toes in the morning either. It, there's just days that I wake up. That just makes me feel so good right now. I it's, can't even tell you. And, and it's okay, you know. You just have to accept where you are. Every day is different, mm -hmm. you know. And there's different stresses in your life, and it depends where where you kind of are. But mm -hmm. um, if if you're if you're really looking to bring something into your life to kind of change. It, it's it's changing physical movements, mm -hmm. and by doing so, you're really changing your thinking. Huh. Um, I like to think of yoga as, sure, physically I'm getting more flexible, but the best benefit is mentally I'm mm -hmm. getting more flexible. Um, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, and, and that's it. I mean, it, uh -huh. it really helps me while I'm in class and I'm moving through different movements and I'm allowing my breath to guide me and my body kind of doing as it wants. Uh -huh. It reminds me as I'm going through my day, like I don't have to get caught up in, in the things that are supposed to happen. We can't micromanage the world. Exactly. We can't. It's out of our control. Yeah. Really we is. like to control it, though. We like yeah. to try to control like it, to but it really, <laughs> right, right. It, we're really not. It's yeah. sort of out of our 
yeah. out of our purview. Exactly. Um, so, okay, so we're going to get up, we're going to stretch, we're going to touch mm -hmm. our toes. Is there anything else simple I can do? Um, Any sort of breathing I can do that you could sure. kind of yeah, give us a little clue, like a quick breathing exercise? Sure. We could do a quick breathing exercise. Um, pranayama is, is the breath. Um, it's the life force uh -huh. in, in yoga. Um, and yoga is just a philosophy. That's, that's what it is. There's not, is that you don't have to say, oh, I'm Catholic, I can't do that, or I'm this and no. I can't do that. Oh, no, 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 there's no religious factor. Yoga uh -huh. is just, it comes from, you know, India. So, of course, there's different religions, but... Um, no, it's, it's just a philosophy, uh -huh. and it's just ways to approach life um, and hopefully be the best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, as far as breathing goes, um, there's a simple, like, belly breath breathing. Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing that somehow we get to think that our breath just comes from our lungs uh -huh. and we breathe in our chest. Um, yoga is all about breathing from your belly. Uh -huh. So a really simple when you wake up in the morning. Um, you can even just sit in a chair just like this with your mm -hmm. hands. You know, if you don't want to sit like in, in a lotus position, like uh -huh. with legs crossed or anything. Um, but inhaling through the nose, mm -hmm. so you'll feel the air nice and slow. It's um, Typically, you'd like to do like an eight-second in-breath and an eight-second exhale, but you can always build to that. You can start 4-4, uh -huh. four, four. Um, but an inhalation through the nose, and you start with your belly. So focusing your thoughts on your belly and feeling your belly expand, and then feeling your ribs expand, and then eventually getting to your chest, your lungs. Instead of going breath. right up here first. Right, which we often do. Um, and I don't know if it's just because in our society, everyone wants to be like, looking thin mm -hmm. so they don't want their belly to expand <laughs> you know I, yeah, yeah. I don't i don't know what it is but um you want your belly to expand you can put your hands on your belly and feel those muscles expand feel uh -huh. the ribs feel no your we chest. have to suck that in for everything right right, <laughs> right um but doing that and then when you get to the top when you get to like oh okay i think that inhale's there just taking that second um just to be in that moment mm -hmm. um in yogic philosophy the understanding is that's the moment in which you can kind of hear the universe speak to you in between the inhalation and the exhalation. Because you're exactly in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then exhaling, and again, starting from the chest, letting, feeling your chest kind of deflate, the ribs, and then eventually emptying out your belly uh -huh. and then taking that moment again. And that's a full um, life cycle, so to speak. Mm -hmm. There's a full creation, a, a like birth, uh -huh. and then um, getting rid of, of the waste in your body. And all the stuff we don't need. All the stuff we don't need. Which is a lot. A lot. <laughs> we carry around a lot of we do. toxins with us between, um, you know, the air we breathe, the food we eat, um, you know, everything Anger, in hatred, frustration, blah, 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 blah. Yep. There's a lot all of that. Of all yeah, that negativity. Yeah. So um, yoga is just a great way to come and, and try and get rid of, not, you know, not all of it, but just working towards kind of accepting the moment and letting go of things that don't serve us. Um, both physically and mentally and, uh -huh. and uh -huh. emotionally. And it's changed your life completely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways, um, since I've kind of come onto this journey of, mm -hmm. of yoga and, and gotten certified, um, a lot of things have fallen into place for me since uh -huh. that. Um, and, and I don't know if I can just chalk it up to yoga, but I, I don't believe in coincidences at uh -huh. all. Uh -huh. um, and since then, I feel like I've just been on this path um, I study Ayurvedic medicine now, which is ancient Indian medicine, and uh -huh. I, I was introduced to that through yoga, um, and it has, it truly has changed my life. Um, I've been able to slow things down. I grew up in a, um, a, a very, I love my family, <laughs> I love my family, but very, you know, noisy, you uh -huh. know, uh -huh. um, Irish, Catholic, Italian, and uh -huh. very noisy, and, and I don't think I ever learned to listen, mm -hmm. um, truly listen. Yeah, it's like cause of many people mm -hmm. and um, through yoga I've learned to to be present in moments and, and listen and, and be a better and friend enjoy the and moment and yeah. just yeah yeah just yeah. just everything just be a, a better version of myself and that's terrific so yeah. how do we find you I want to do yoga with you what do I where do I go look where do I go okay um, so I currently teach um, at the studio around the corner mm -hmm. in, in the town of Brewster mm -hmm. um, so I teach Sunday mornings from 8 to 9 uh -huh. and then Wednesday evenings from 5:30 to 6 30 uh -huh. so you can always find me there um, I do substitute in Connecticut a little bit, um, but right now, you know, I don't, I wouldn't be able to say like exactly how uh -huh. you find me. Um, but your class at the studio is open to anybody who wants to, to come? Open to anyone, yeah. I mm -hmm. do um, package deals, so you can either do $72 for six classes, or you can drop in whenever you want. It's $15 for a drop-in. 
That's great. Yeah, you can come whenever, and it's a really great space. It's, it is. It's, it's got really a really nice, nice feel to it, it does. doesn't it? The second I walked in, I was like, I have to teach here. It just <laughs> has the best energy, and it's very creative energy. It is. It um, is. I think it's with all the beautiful art on the walls. I mean, it really can find yourself quieting. In absolutely. It. And the yeah. art is always changing. Yes. Which it's funny. Earlier, you asked, you know, do I go in with a plan? Sometimes when I walk in, I have a plan, but because of the artwork... You change it. I totally change it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Because it's different yeah. energy in there all the time. Yeah. Um, and depending on who comes, it's always... So I love having new students drop in. You know, I, I have my regulars and... So that's 8 o'clock on Sunday mornings. 8 o'clock on Sunday mornings mm -hmm. and 5.30 on, on Wednesday evenings. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough for being here today because I you. just think what you're doing is wonderful. And I think that more of us should stop a little bit and stop, take a moment, stop, and do some yoga. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yeah. I think that yoga, we would all be a little happier. Yeah, yoga means union, so and we can all unite together. And, yes. And just... Boys, girls, yeah. any age, any, any, age. any yeah. ability. I have, I have guys come to my class. So you if do? There's any, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if there's any guys who are nervous, they'd be the only one. Men are more than welcome. I think that's so, wonderful. Well, yeah. thank you so much for thank joining us today, too. and I hope that you continue to do yoga at the studio. I think it's a great space, yeah. and I'm so glad that we have you there. Yeah. And it's a nice addition to the area, because there really isn't anything else like around right there now. There isn't, which was yeah. shocking when I came back to the area. I was like, because oh, I was looking for a studio to practice at, because it's uh -huh. nice to go to different teachers. Yeah. And, um, I noticed there wasn't one. There's, so there's just not. It's yeah. we're, we're I'm really grateful. I'm we're in a yoga desert. We are. <laughs> well, hopefully not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> I'm helping. Hopefully. So thank you so much. Thank and, you. And um, I look forward to doing yoga with you someday. Yeah, I hope so. Okay.